Let's uh, we'll rise and we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Well, welcome everybody to our May 1st. The months just have been flying by. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are there any changes to the agenda that anybody would like to offer? Okay, seeing none. Um, let's go right to public comments for first session. All right. So I'm going to uh, put the public comment um, policy up on the board. Um, it hasn't worked the past couple of times for some reason, still trying to figure out the um, glitch in that part. But if it doesn't, I'll just run over it real quickly, um, basically. But while we're waiting for that to potentially load up, if you're in the uh, remote audience, you can raise your hand with the hand raise feature at the bottom of the screen. That'll give me a little hand that I can acknowledge you by. Looks like it's not going to work today. Um, if you are in person and would like to make a public comment, um, please raise your hand. I can bring a microphone over to you. Um, you're not going to be able to hear yourself, but it's just to pull in for the uh, live stream. Um, in either case, if you're making a public comment, please use first name, last name, and town of residence. Um, policy in a basic sense is just saying, you know, be kind. Um, you know, don't speak poorly about people. And there's a few other pieces in there that I'll try to pull up. And we'll go to our physical audience first, because that's out of hand. Um, Carl, <clears throat> sorry, Carl Pruder, Town of Ringe. Um, we recently, I'm a select uh, on the select board in Ringe, and we recently got a um, bill and uh, other information regarding a new policy, or it's not a new policy, but we've been reclassified into the policy, and um, it's going to affect our rec department. So uh, basically, we discussed it at our last meeting. I said I would come here. Um, I've been trying to get information. I, I, I was able to talk to Trey Horn today. Uh, he informed me as much as uh, he could, uh, but apparently the um, the rec departments of Jaffrey and Ringe have been reclassified, but I guess, uh, and we're now from a level three to a level six and out of seven. And, uh, but this means that there are possible fees involved um, and so uh, we have three levels of programs. Uh, I don't know how it's going to be impacted, and I guess I'm looking for information here, although we may need it on the agenda in a couple of weeks or next time you meet so that we could uh, have you present and share what you're, you have there because a uh, little information sparks rumor and speculation, and which is not helpful. Um, I'm a firm believer in the common school system. It's I'm a history guy. It's what made America uh, prosperous. And um, we need to have this community of governments working together and not uh, dipping our hands into other people's pockets. Um, and specifically, I'm saying, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, I, the, the, I think the school has legitimate concerns uh, that are costs being incurred. It's unfortunate this is coming out just after the budget set, because if there were changes in the uh, agreements, we would have put those in our budget. Um, but uh, right now, it's uh, possibly going to impact Ringe negatively. It may actually prove a bonus for Jeffrey if they start charging for fields and stuff like that. So uh, there, uh, I'm not sure how it will affect the school. I think it might actually cost the school money in the long run, but it may, and if the goal was just to reduce the uh, use of the facilities 
to preserve them, um, it may be effective. It may have us cancel different things, but that again, we'll have to find out when you do a presentation or give the um, give this uh, more information for it. Um, so I, that's all I have at this point, but um, we still have a lot of questions. Uh, and I know Jeffrey Select Board is working on this uh, also. So thank you. Yes, sure, please. You had said you received a bill with it. And I, was this a new bill? Like, is it, is it a bill. thing that you've had I'm to do before? Uh, this is the first time Dan said he's seen something like this and it was sent okay. to him. I see. Yeah. But there are currently no charges right. and this is for future things, but I don't know how it's going to impact us. Right. Any chance this included a copy of the updated policy? Like, have you seen the updated policy? No, we had a summary of the updated policy uh, stating that we were now reclassified from a, a priority three um, activities to priority six out of seven. And what it meant is that um, I guess with the priorities come different billing uh, issues. And so uh, this, we have three levels of programs. Uh, most of them are free for the kids who, you know, um, uh, basically uh, uh, the students at JRMS and other Jaffrey students who come and join our program. Uh, those are free. And if we had um, $150 facility use plus a uh, custodial of $45 per uh, hour. This could cost $300 per event. Um, and this is something that we're not charging. Uh, there's another level where we charge about $50. It usually involves buying a t-shirt, things like that. So there's a little um, extra there for the town, uh, which is um, our, some of our budget comes from that, but um, We'd have to reconfigure that if we're not going to be able to um, make, you know, we can't really charge more for some of these programs. And then there's uh, commercial ones where I think that uh, the school has a legitimate grievance that there are, there are commercial activities in their companies who are for profit and using the facilities. And they probably, that I we would consider um, adjusting uh, our policy or your policy, and we could see if there were, I think there are legitimate concerns on the school's part for uh, getting some revenues from that. And one more question. Did the notification you get um, mention the waiver? It did mention a waiver, and I asked specifically about that, and I was told that it's on a, um, it's on a per event basis. It's not an annual waiver. It's uh, it would be for every event we did. So if we had um, 40 weeks of different things, we would have 40 waivers being requested. Uh, and perhaps I don't know if we need a waiver for each program. If we have uh, um, three grade levels playing basketball, do they all need a waiver? Don't know yet, but hopefully we'll find that out. And um, uh, one of the concerns I had is that uh, we we are uh, more distant from the main campus, uh, so we get our facilities used a lot less than Jaffrey does. But Jaffrey is uh, has much effort and expense into preparing fields for the school, uh, and they are doing this at no charge. Um, and this could incur if Jaffrey decided uh, that could incur a huge cost on the school if they had to pay for and but it's basically transferring money from your athletic program to your facilities uh, you know it's it, it looks like a bookkeeper's dream or a nightmare depending on your perspective <laughs> The policy committee or you or someone would be glad to go to the second meeting and explain PFR, policy PFR. Charlie, could you just speak up just a little bit? Okay. So, um, 
There's no speakers, so no, you're, not, oh. yeah, you're not gonna. I could barely hear each other. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I was saying that there were two things. One was, um, I for one, and I'm sure the policy committee uh, members and the, the chairman would be glad to attend the selectman's meeting to explain KFR, policy KFR. Uh, the second one is I was going to ask the chairman if he wants to have any discussion of that tonight or. Oh. <clears throat> I mean, I I would say only if only if if you so desire. I mean, typically we receive input, but right, if we if anybody wants to ask a question or have discussion, you know, board members, we we can do that. But uh, well, I think it would be in the interest of uh, clarification to address it right now. In my opinion. I don't know how the rest of the board feels. Okay. I yeah. I would be glad to talk about it with you guys. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about it. Now instead of having this lingering out in the community. Um, and we'll make sure to leave room for more people who want to have public comments. Um, is there any chance, Nick, that you could put up? KFR, because for some reason the policy database is not loading for me. And, and yeah, um, I'm working on that right now. Thank you. Um, Carl, um, I will say that at the meeting, so this has been a long, um, you would notice it's been updated a couple times in the last year. This has been a lot of back and forth. Um, at the most recent meeting where we made the changes to reclassify, um, we invited both Jaffrey and Ringe uh, town uh, leaders and rec department to come to that meeting. Jaffrey did. And so this is in with the input um, and agreement of the rec manager and the town manager for Jaffrey. Nobody from Ringe came. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry that things didn't get communicated uh, clearly until you get a, a bill, even though it's zero. Um, but all of those, in essence, you listed numerous ways that, this, that the town uses facilities that are school run. And that was exactly why. There were so many broad things that were in conflict and becoming in conflict with school things and with election things that it was we're trying to keep things as clarified as possible as organized as possible we have to make priorities in that so we separated out the election duties from the normal town things which hadn't been done before we have to make sure that our town voting can happen in a safe place for everybody um and but that's different from a craft fair right now no somebody filling out a form for a five day a week program isn't going to have to fill it out for each day and the waiver is actually a crucial piece of this and i wish that that had been communicated clearer what the board wants is not to nickel and dime what the board wants is to be able to see what's happening and know, okay, is this a for-profit? Is this a non-profit? Where is that profit going? You know, that's that's what we want to see. So the form is all online. It's all in Frevo. And the waiver should be there, hopefully by now. Everything is grandfathered until July 1st, until the end of the school year. So nobody, that's why I questioned the bill. Like nobody's getting paid right now. Nobody's getting charged right now. It's by these. Um, so... You know, everything for this spring is remaining the same, but starting in the summer, um, this new process is in place. Um, Trey is doing the best he can to get everything ready for that time period. So I'm hoping the waiver is there, but that waiver is, is crucial for the rec department. It's crucial for, for the town to use, to say, no, we wanna have these things. And it's not so we can just, rubber stamp no it's so the board actually knows what's what the property is being used for so we can be better responsible for the deterioration and decomposition of our properties and and know who's supporting it a lot of the a lot of what you guys um, do in your organizations is bring incredible 
donations and incredible effort into into supporting these communities and these these properties we want to we want to see that better we, it just hadn't been communicated and hadn't been clear before so we just want to see it better this is this is about more transparency not not about nickel and diming anybody okay uh, thank you. And uh, we, I'm sorry we dropped the ball and not, I, I had passed, and there were no pa um, notices passed down to me. And um, uh, we'll, I'll, we'll look into that. But thank you. So I'll have to look into that as well. I'm not sure if I, if I sent an invite in my original invite that I sent different people. So I, I did have to, I'll have to, I'll have to look at that. So. So one of the issues that, that uh, um, made us look at the policy and address the policy was that there's a category uh, seven, which is for-profit entities. And uh, we believe that there are some for-profit entities that are coming in the back door through the rec department and consequently, where they would normally be asked to provide uh, some facilities fees, okay, are not doing that. They're avoiding that through coming into the rec department. So that's why we would like to know uh, who's using it and for what purpose. Um, so that's really what it's all about. It's just a matter of trying to find out who's using it and what it's being used for. Um, and I can go into detail beyond that, but I, I, that should be sufficient. Uh, thank you. And I, 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 we agree with you that their the level, our third level should be a category seven, as you indicated, and um, that the other programs, but we just, the information we had is everything was level six. And so we were trying to sort that out. No, we, we added okay. we had a couple more categories. Okay. Top. One of them was the elections. Yes, absolutely. We know what happened last time. And one of them was graduation. Yes. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, thank you for your your comment and thank you for the discussion. So, for follow up, I, I will attend um, the next selectmen's meeting. And uh, anyone else want to join me? Lisa? When uh, is it? I'm sorry? When is it? It's. Uh, it would be the following Wednesday. Yep. Yeah. I'll probably be on. I'll ask Lori to put you on the agenda. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Very good. Nick, are there any other uh, people who have? Raise their hand. In the room. Uh, no, not. Okay. Very good. Um, all right. So then, um, let's move on then to Amriel, the student representative report. Welcome. Well, I mean, not much has happened because we did just get back from break, but we have AP testing on Wednesday. There's a field trip to the Peabody Essex, Essex Museum in Salem, Mass. on Thursday. Um, my English class is currently reading The Crucible, which is takes place in like when the Salem Witch Trials were going on and stuff. I know there are a couple history classes talking about like that same time period. So we're going down to see the museum in Salem. Um, baseball is currently sitting ninth in D3. Softball is seventh. Tennis is 11th. And track has a meet coming up on Friday. Okay, and uh, th does anybody have any questions? Well, I guess I'll ask the, the AP exams start on Wednesday? Yes, I believe it's Wednesday. And they must go for a couple of weeks? And... I think they're just like all on Wednesday, but like it's all day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm not in any AP classes, so I don't really know, but that's what I've been told. Right. 
Um, I heard and this is sort of past event, but um, when we had our school board meeting, I think we realized that Megan Fuhrer, the librarian, ran in the Boston Marathon. Oh yeah, she did. That the school did a did mm -hmm. a celebration for her. Yeah, like that is awesome. We had the um, band leader around, and they were playing some songs and stuff, and we all got in the hall and like had signs for her and stuff. That is yeah, when I got on WMUR. Oh, it did. Yeah, that's cool. So part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Nice. And so uh, the school year is getting short. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yes. How did the course selection go for you? I thought that it went pretty smoothly. I mean, I thought that the new um, system that we used was pretty easy to follow and figure out. You like the choices that were available? Yeah. Were you able to like figure it out? Like, oh, I really want to take ceramics. Mm -hmm. Can I fit it in my schedule? Were you able to? Well, I don't know if like that. about that part yet. I think that's more on guidance, trying to fit it into our schedules now. But like overall, just like picking out like what classes we were interested in taking for next year was was relatively pretty easy. And when you are choosing, do you have um before you as a junior, um does do you have the information? These are the classes that you need to take, or these are the credits you need to take. Is mm -hmm. that available? Yeah, you? guidance came in and talked to like all the classes and stuff, and told them like what they needed to have for each year. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Very cool. Great. Well, thank you again for coming and giving us your update. Hey, excellent. So uh, that brings us to the superintendent's report. Yeah, so we had vacation last week, um, and I did actually go away, so that was good. Um, but there was a lot happening here. And so uh, just a few highlights of what happened here. If you go over to RMS or and JGS, uh, you'll see that their front entrance doors are all changed. They've all been fixed. They all now are ADA compliant as well. So if you have a fob, you can um, wave that and then press a button doors will open automatically, stay open for quite some time. I waited to see how long that would be. A good 30 seconds, actually. So that's nice. And uh, so those those items took place on the outside. On the inside, also work was done uh, via the SAFE grant for containment doors. Uh, those are still, they're not complete, but they, they look complete, but there's still some um, attachments that need to be uh, implemented or put in place. So we have quite a bit of work that has been scheduled facilities wise for the well before July. So uh, a lot of the work that we talked about uh, in JGS on flooring, uh, some safety elements to that, uh, both the Pratt and the JGS uh, gym floors are going to be sanded down, refinished. Uh, mascots put into place and so forth. So that will be nice to get some branding, especially at JGS where there really hasn't been any. Um, and also there'll be some nice um, tiles that will have the mascot on that in the hallway as well, not in the middle or anything, but just kind of when, as you enter into a space, you'll see that. So it's, it's really neat, matches the flooring very nicely and we'll have some new flooring there. The uh, lots of, many things happening. So last week while I was gone, um, Nick put together, uh, went, got, uh, met with several individuals, put together a job fair. So we're going to be doing another job fair. It will be on Saturday the 13th from 10 to 2. Uh, advertisements uh, will be going out starting tomorrow. Our, we'll be using our signs again because we got good feedback that that was actually what brought people to our last job fair. And so, but we'll be doing those things uh, starting tomorrow, Route 202 Steering Committee, we have a first meeting on the 18th. We have a small group right now of about six, and so there are other individuals that people have indicated that uh, they believe should or might be a good a partner in this effort. And so we'll reach out to them now that we have a date and time, we can say, does this work for you? And then other meetings that are ongoing uh, this Wednesday and not uh, and two Wednesdays after that, so the 17th, I think it is, uh, we will hopefully finish off the 
initial work that we have been doing with the bullying and discrimination policy work with that group. I did invite in someone to come and talk a little bit about some of uh, their perceptions of what we've been doing already. I don't know if he'll be able to. Um, if, he, if he can't, that's fine. Uh, maybe we can do that another time because we will present at some point to the board or at least the policy committee. And then the athletic committee will meet its last meeting prior to having a presentation before the board will meet uh, next Wednesday. So that's the 10th. And uh, some of the work that they've done, they they were encouraging uh, some things that we've already just talked about to be done, such as the Pratt, uh, which included also the uh, bleachers, the bleachers uh, for the purpose of actually uh, making them a little nicer, making them automated so that we don't have workers' comp issues, so that they're safer, uh, also so that they um, are ADA compliant and that they also provide the uh, necessary space for the referees that they are requesting that we have, um, that we currently don't have for them and for scorekeepers and so forth. We don't have them in the right places. So that work is happening, but John has also um, asked a group to come in and provide a lot of information about our fields so that we have some information about what we can do with them the years to come. So um, I don't, I haven't been briefed on that yet. So I don't, but we'll talk about that at our next athletic committee meeting. We have a, we'll have one more elementary committee meeting as well. Some of that information that we've done there, along with some more information gathering over the next couple of weeks, uh, primarily at JGS, uh, will be used to kind of finalize our conversation and and where we're, you know, this we'll be able to update the board as to what we're wanting to continue to do and where we're focusing on. Um, and then we have the RFP has gone out. It should be in the papers this week. It's on our website for the uh, CTE work. So that was last week. We had been working on it for a couple of weeks got a draft, gave it to uh, several other individuals in the organization. Carrie then had it finally uh, vetted through legal. And so we're going through that process to get uh, architectural firms to start dreaming about what we can do. We have a couple different options within there, uh, looking at this campus right here, and then also looking at the Route 202 campus, which of course will, that information will play into any future conversations that the steering committee would say we, we want to do or whatever act, whatever action the steering committee says we'd like to go and move forward with. So uh, those are the items that are kind of business wise in the near future. Um, and it's hiring season. We've been, in, there's a lot of interviewing going on and um, I think we've had some great hires so far. Sad to see some, some resignations, but a lot of, you know, different reasons, um, and we wish the, them, the, these individuals, the best. Really quick little question. The um, mascot, did we nail down a picture for that? I remember we had, like, the wrong bird or whatever. Is there, is there a... There's still, there needs to be some work for the mascot here, and that's okay. gonna, but the, we do have a mascot for JGS, a really cool owl. Oh, okay, yeah. right, because they're, to, yeah, 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 gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. But you're right, we don't have... <laughs> I, I don't know we don't we don't have an oriole that, <laughs> it's, it's so a raven. raven it's a raven with a with dyed with, with, with orange with a dyed <laughs> orange and rms has there. eagle they're the eagle okay so okay. they have just recently I, well that's that's important too because we have been looking at branding in all three of the schools and so rms has chosen their eagle a more i would call it kid-friendly eagle yeah. as opposed to that murderous looking bird in the middle of that gymnasium <laughs> that we put in there um so we'll have to think about that at some point but they are we are putting in a sign for rms you know rms is a really nice school we want to make it look even nicer and more inviting you have that nice parking lot so we did when we put the parking lot in put the electricity into that that area um, do we have, oh, that's, yeah, there's your eagle, right? So that will be on the sign. The sign will be a, a little bit simpler or a lot simpler than what we have out here, be more of a traditional sign with some granite posts, but we'll be able to put some lights, um, underneath and maybe some flowers and so forth. So it can shine nice. up to see the sign. So that's, and that 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a phoenix. Yeah, it, it's, 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 you know, it's, a, it's a little happier. It's Whatever. a little happier of a bird. Yeah. yeah. Uh, th this artwork. Yes, Nick. Sorry. Why don't you talk about? Yeah, because Nick's been working um, really so hard. The past uh, couple of years, we've worked on looking at new um, logos because the old RMS one was just a clip art thing that somebody picked up offline, put the school colors on it, called it a day. JGS never really had one. They were both a very similar process where we worked with um, Bulldog and Keen because we've worked with them in the past with some uh, things and they took feedback. So we started with saying what characteristics do they want to have, things like that. We sent that stuff off to them. They created a couple different options. Then we would take them to staff. Staff would weigh in on it. We'd take that feedback, we'd revise, and then it would go out to the student body in some sort of way. I don't know if in RMS, if it went out to the student body, just because it happened a little bit more over the it summer. Did. So it yeah, did. it did, yep. like just at the That's beginning of why, the year. Out of the two yeah. that they had remaining, the, the, the learners picked that one. Yeah, so there was, a lot of, there was a lot of feedback from different groups within the school to make sure that it was representative of the people involved. Um, and it sounds like there is a, Slightly different process happening for here, but that does different, sound like different it's company starting up. For that. Yeah. yeah, just because they have some additional uh, sports considerations and there's some additional branding and opportunities that we can have through working with a different company for like, I think, uniforms and things like that down the line. So I'd say that's one of the big reasons why the kids all want their high school games here and not at our mess. Like, then you're surrounded by it. Oh, wow. um, people. Oh, oh, yeah. Remember, we we're like, we should go over to Ridge and have some games. It's just a nicer gym, bigger gym. But the kids are like, no, we're staying in Conan. Well, and, and that statement is important to know. That it's the importance of having that identity. Yeah. Right? So um, that is a beautiful gym over there. So, it is. And it is. We want to really keep on using it and making sure that some of the work that we do here in the Pratt, or for instance, with the bleachers and the ADA compliant, we got to start thinking about that mm -hmm. and then planning that for that gym space as well and we might have to redo at some point i don't think it would be that expensive that eagle once you know it, the oriole no well the oriole needs to be done oh, that will be done this the summer. eagle yeah. been, yeah. The, <laughs> that eagle is quite Sorry, quite the so quite the claws so yeah. quite the <laughs> talons i guess it would be All right, very good. Thank you, Ruben. Are there any other questions for Ruben? Comments? And um, <clears throat> if not, let's move on to the consent agenda. Would anybody like to uh, offer a motion? Or are there any changes to the consent agenda? Make a motion to accept the consent agenda. Thank you, Lisa. Second. Thank you, Charlie. If there's no discussion, then uh, all in favor, please aye. signify by saying aye. 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 He's rushing. <laughs> so I think we've got a 7 0 on that one there. So just to explain to the public by going through the consent agenda, everything that was in that number six has been approved. So um, our new Congratulations to our new facility director who will be coming on board, um, Sandra Kibbe and uh, Sandy. And uh, we're excited to have her starting with us shortly, um, May 15th. And we'll get the opportunity. We're very fortunate to have the opportunity to have our outgoing facilities director and the incoming one work together for a period of time. So there's a nice, there's a smoother transition. Yes, and welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> and um, this was uh, nice. We didn't have to remove the minutes, which was kind of a kind of good. We've all been we've all been around for a bit, and that's been nice. Um, Moving on to uh, board matters, I, I asked if we could move board matters up a little bit because we've had some discussion about trying to make some changes to our board. 
meetings. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's a, a good thing. And uh, by moving it up, my hope was that we could uh, have a little bit more of a chance to you know, talk about board matters before we're close to adjourning and everyone is sometimes very ready to adjourn. So, so that was that was the thinking. Uh, so um, on board committee assignments, we discussed last time, but I was there, there were some questions, I think about uh, assignments or some people wanted to verify. Uh, and I think some of that's been done or, or is everybody okay with the assignments and uh, you know, able, able to uh, to meet at the times? Yeah. Okay. It, I, I think it was because there was some, yeah. she I, had to work. Once we meet with the finance committee, um, I would like to talk, but I don't want to change the time without talking to the whole finance committee, like see if there's a better time. It's that would be hard for me to get there to the finance committee at three thirty. I mean, I that's when I've got to work, so I can't just leave there. But I think that's more. I can I can do the May one, and then summer's piece of cake. So we have until September to figure out a better time. Good. Okay. Um, the communication committee. Did you add Chris to? I talked to Chris today um, because he had came up and told me. Um, so he's now at least aware of it. And then I can give him the information. Um, but yeah, I guess just for my clarity, John, is the are the assignments referenced based on the list that I had sent you or were there changes made between then and now? Just because I wasn't at the last meeting. <clears throat> I just so want to make I, sure I have the roster I, correct. I, I think I sent an email with my recommendations, and I I, I, I think everybody at, at our meeting last time agreed that they could work with those recommendations. You sent off my email? I, I, or I you sent, made it? I sent an email, and I, I believe I sent it to you. If I didn't, then I'll make sure that I do when I... This would have been before the last meeting. Yeah, if you want to just forward that to me, because I don't have it. And then that way, like I said, I can just have the roster list um, okay. ready. So we'll, we'll, we'll do. Uh, there were one change we've made uh, is to start our public meeting, our non public meeting at six, but end at 6 30, start a public meeting at 6 30. That seems to be working okay. Everybody's. We've been late each time, but okay. <laughs> Um, two or three. That's well, a couple of minutes here and there yeah. amongst friends. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and, you know, we have been working a certain way for a number of years, but it's, uh, I, I don't think we've been rigid, but I also think that there is opportunity to make changes. And so as we see things that we think might make our board meetings either more effective or more, you know, What's the word? Efficient, I guess, right? Effective or efficient, we should we should bring them up. And I wanted to mention the uh, live district calendar. There was a recommendation by uh, via public comment at our last meeting that we eliminate that. But my thinking is, uh, well, well, I wanted to bring that up because it was a recommendation that was made, and I guess ask if there are you know, comments on that or, or thoughts. And, and if nobody jumps in, I'll just throw out an idea. I, I, I think that there, the value of having the life calendar is that it gives us all a chance to be reminded of the things that are coming up and to see where we as board members might want to represent. And along with that, I thought that that might be something that we can move a little further down in the agenda. I don't think it needs to be the first item necessarily. So also was... the uh, public benefits from it. I don't want to review it. And uh, I personally 
find it very, very helpful to uh, demonstrate all of the activities that are going on. I think it's worthwhile. I don't think it's something that monopolizes a lot of time. I think it's good. And same as you, like it just a quick reminder to me, usually I tap on the next board meeting button and put it in my calendar. <laughs> I'm like, I like it. <laughs> yep. yep. Okay. And now, uh, Nick? Yeah, I would say that the one comment that I have, um, just as the person that does it, is my one kind of hang up that happens is if the board has questions, I'm not really the person that can really help to answer them. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I feel like we review it, and I'm not saying there's a value to doing that or having it somewhere that we can at least link to it. Um, but sometimes I feel like we get a lot of questions and then we don't really have the answers. So we have like a recording or an agenda or whatever in which we're not able to properly really help with those questions. So I almost wonder if that is desirable to have answer answers to questions. If there's a way that like the board and the review of the the agenda over the weekend, those questions could come ahead of time, just because then I'd be able to actually reach out to people, and then we're not kind of clamoring to potentially try to find somebody the night of that could find an answer. I mean, I remember there was a concert recently, and I was like texting Jen Horn because Jen Horn had information for me, and we're like going back and forth, and it ended up making. A calendar review take like 25 minutes when if i had those in advance i could have just you know tried to get those answers ahead of time mm -hmm. so That's a good idea. Right. and then um there was one other uh comment made from the public at our last meeting about removing minutes from the consent agenda and it occurs to me that, you know, that's something we should consider. I don't know if there are any opinions on that. We do often remove them just because we don't always have all seven of us here. But uh, if we wanted to, we could always have that as, you know, item, the item right after or right before the uh, consent agenda. Is there a feeling on that? So it's just a, just a clarification question. It's just that the recommendation was for to take it out of the consent agenda to put it like in its own little box so right. that then we vote on that completely separately so that it doesn't have to be taken out then voted on separately right i would say that makes a lot of sense especially yeah. with summer coming it makes good sense yeah because then it's just it's way faster than i make a motion to do this and then to do that well yeah but the thing is is you don't have to make those motions unless someone's not here right because right. all, all you're doing is asking for approval of the minutes which right. we can do, but the person who's not here has to abstain. Right, but doesn't it have to be before they do all that? You have to say that you want to take them out to change them first. Like there's like this. There's this like steps. Like yeah, there's a few steps instead of just yeah, you, like you remove it from the consent agenda. Right, and then you approve it separately. Right. So if it was just separate, we, there would be no other difference except that it was separate. So we'd say. Who approves the consent agenda? I. How about the minutes? I have seen. I guess it just kind of takes up that one step of if people aren't here. And like she said, summer's coming up. But I believe in. No, I'm just kidding. My brain. <laughs> Nick had his hand. Yes. Yeah. The the one consideration for summer, and I don't really have a way to think about it either way. But the consideration with summer is that we have a lot of off schedule board meetings. So the potential issue that you have there is you're worried about attendance. You're splitting it out from the consent agenda. But if we have an off schedule board meeting, you're going to have multiple meeting minutes in one session anyway. And then you still might have to make that vote to separate that item anyway. Because if you have two or three sets of minutes, you know, like, for example, they don't it didn't matter tonight, but we caught up on some of the non public minutes uh, tonight. So we had two different sessions. So theoretically, that could be two separate votes. So that would be my only consideration for like thinking about the summer is that you still might have to make those additional motions. Huh. Right. So I can see the way there's a few steps. That's true. I don't know That's which true. one makes more sense. Okay. Well, um, it doesn't seem like there's a strong consensus to do it, although does seem to make some sense. So I guess unless somebody has a motion to do it, I'd say, why don't we 
leave it for the moment and see how stale it goes. That's fine. None of these things have to be done only one time. We can decide um, uh, down the road. Yeah, John, I think uh, one other item that we discussed, and I'll say this because Nick uh, wasn't here, and I think we were maybe looking for his input. Um, we discussed, you know, we have all the meetings here now, right? I think there's reason, very good reasons for that, and there's very good benefits for that. We did discuss kind of amongst ourselves whether there is a reason or advantage to having meetings in range once in a while, just for you know possible accessibility. Um, ultimately, we concluded that there didn't seem to be like a strong reason to do it. And we see tonight that we did have somebody from range here. So obviously I think there's advantages to having a regular spot yeah. and to record. But I think the question that wasn't answered was like, if we were, if there was a kind of a community reason, um, have some more accessibility and range, could we have it recorded there easily? Or would that be so um, there's a lot of additional work and complexity for you or something yeah else. so one project that i did over the vacation was i moved all my stuff so now instead of it being in the sau office it's literally in there so obviously that is incredibly more easy for me to take equipment and just kind of go around here and put it in um when we last discussed as we were kind of coming out of covid we had discussed, you know, do we want to start splitting locations? And the conversation, as I remember it, was that one, we don't really have a great like acoustic space that anybody was aware of to set up some of this equipment. Prior to that, we were in the our, the cafeteria and even just the audio in there trying to hear people speak was tough because there's like the um, all the things that are plugged in and making noise. There are a couple, of, you know, if you can unplug it, but if you don't remember, milk goes bad, things like that. You don't want that. Um, we do have accessibility and that we have a live stream option. I understand the internet accessibility is its own issue in and of itself. Um, the biggest hurdle for me, if we were to split spaces, would be finding a location that actually works well. You know, this for me is moving six tables. I actually do all the setup and the breakdown of the space, just do the custodial kind of shortage so that they don't have to worry about, you know, setting all this up for me and breaking it down. Um, the other issue would be making sure that we just have that good quality space to be able to actually offer a live stream where we could pick up audio well. You know, the biggest thing I have to contend with in here is the um, air unit behind me. Um, but any of these other ambient noise things is going to pick up in the speakers. It's going to be harder to theoretically pull out. Um, the other consideration is that while we do have some equipment duplication, I have one of these that eventually has to go over to RMS. Um, I don't have duplication of everything. I'd still have to take this. I'd still have to take my two boxes. I'd still have, I'd still have to take the speaker. So I'm still having to load up a lot of equipment to bring over when we do that so yeah i think and i think those were our assumptions mm -hmm. i just kind of wanted to hear it from you yeah <laughs> i think so what I, I'm hearing is we just i don't have a problem doing it you know i yeah, i start this stuff around here there and everywhere it's just the no, i understand works. what you're saying and it's, there's additional work additional complexity yeah. it can be done but i think without the driving need i think our conclusion was that things seem to be working right now but it'll be good information to have in the future should the yeah. should things change and right we, we decide it would be advantageous to be over in range for you know one meeting or a period of time one well, the other discussion could be centered around um you know like we do all the like we do deliberative session and thing like that over at um rms we could move the uh budget hearing over there too so that there's potentially more of a uh, equitable situation if we did do some back and forth we could try to figure out is there a good space um but yeah i'm i'm fine either way okay yeah just something i think to continue to think about going forward but i don't think anybody here supports any sort of change now but yeah that's all okay nick there was actually one other sort of related question um is is there a sort of an intermediate way of including the public that wouldn't be 
was it something that we could do if you weren't here? But and by intermediate, I mean you know, like I've attended some meetings where somebody has a laptop and they open Zoom, and it's not overly effective, but it works, you know. And there is plenty of ways that we could do it. I mean, I have one of these boxes up front. I've created there. I have a third one that's in there. And I've created a set that was used by uh, high school students to live stream the basketball games. So they had like a kit that they just could grab and then they could set up something that would be smaller to do the live stream. It's mostly just a question of finding who is that right person, educating them on how to do it. Um, it's, it I wouldn't say that there's a good quality solution to just say, oh, I'm not here. Just throw a computer at somebody and they're good to go. Because otherwise you're just essentially putting a laptop in front of you guys. And, you know, that's what, that was literally like the first COVID meeting. We did that. Um, audio quality was not great. Video quality was not great. It really didn't help because you couldn't really hear, you couldn't really see. Um, so if we could identify a person, if there was a backup that we had that I could spend some time with, I trained three high school kids to do it in an hour um not even i think 45 minutes and most of it was just here are all the pieces here is how it all links together um you know i did a lot of youtube setup for them because they were live streaming via youtube so that they essentially just had to open the computer log in do a couple button strokes and then they were there there'd be a little bit more complexity in the actual zoom portion of it just because we're also trying to make sure that people can see the agenda and whatnot um Sound considerations always big, just because right now I have three microphones to pick all nine of you up. And as you can see, I'm usually over here kind of adjusting the knobs. I've, I have it set up in Zoom so that it can kind of auto dial in. And if somebody's a little bit lighter, it can pick them up. If somebody's a little too loud, it can pull them down. It does eliminate some of the background noise. Um, so, you know, figuring out how to best pick up audio in the case like that might be, you know, Again, a little bit more of an educational piece, but we have the we have the way to do it. We can strip this down a little bit. All of this craziness and big stuff that you see, essentially what turns it into something that we can validly stream. There's a little box in here that's about this big, and we have some of those boxes completely separate from the system. And you have the ability to plug in one microphone and I think one or two cameras. Um. And then that would feed directly into the laptop. We do have some of these extra controllers, so we could operate the um, the remote movable cameras. Um, so I just I, I more or less just need a person. Oh, would you consider? Okay, great. So, oh, go ahead. Would you consider uh, training a uh, community volunteer? I mean, I don't really care who I train as long as they're willing and available. We have whatever system worked out so that either they're vetted properly as a volunteer or if they're stipended, that process is followed. Um, we are working on through getting the equipment over into the library, some sort of like checkout system. So there's a little bit more accountability, perhaps some training modules, things like that, that we can work through so that we can start making it more than a just me thing. Um, but again, just need the time to actually develop it. Um, yeah, they, they need just the basic understanding of technology. I mean, most of the stuff is very easy to figure out because all the plugs are so different. So even if you don't really know what things are called, you can kind of match up the shapes and make sure that they're, you know, put in appropriately. Um, so yeah, if you if we have a community volunteer, if we have a student, if we have uh, somebody in house, it's doesn't really matter to me. Okay, great. Thank you for that in information, and it's also a good idea. We can take a look and see if we can find someone. Okay, excellent. Um, so now we have a couple of action items. And the first one is the purchase of uh, Pratt bleachers. Um, do you, are you- Sure, this was something it? we actually didn't think we were gonna be able to do because of the whole bidding process and so forth uh, and working with the state. We found out that this 
uh, company or organization was one that we could use. Uh, actually, it turned out to be a little bit less than what we were originally thinking, which is nice. Um, so John is asking for, uh, uh, you know, you can see that in the first line. I'm, he's formally requesting funds from the Building Maintenance Reserve uh, Maintenance Trust Fund in the amount not to exceed 100000 Uh You can see the pricing. If you can scroll a little bit so we can see all the numbers down below, that would be helpful. Um, so that's just a little bit of information about the trust and where it stands and what will be added to it in July. And I believe that last paragraph there is the motion that he's asking for to award the bleacher seating and accessory contract to Robert H. Lord Company, exclusive dealer for that seating in an amount not to exceed 100000 to be funded from the maintenance trust fund and to authorize the superintendent to execute the contract. And this is to really complete that project of dealing with the floor, which is about 20 some odd thousand. And then of course the bleachers, it's actually a fairly big, big project. Um, will this it, provide more seating or just make them automatic? It will not provide more seating. Um, there's I didn't think really there was any no way to do that. good way to do well right. there's one way to do it but it's not a good way Blow to do the it. Wall. <laughs> okay there's two ways to do it, but <laughs> there's, that, no we've talked we've talked about it right we, it's we, a perfect uh, space for it, it it's, but it's really good to do yeah yep yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but no you'll actually you'll actually probably lose a few spaces there but it will allow for um the proper space to be like i said before for the refs um, for the scorekeeping and also to allow for some more uh, ADA seating uh, where a wheelchair could go in nicely and not, I don't know, be sitting on the floor that they're playing with. So, um, we saw pictures not of, but yes, also the, the not of these, the bleachers from this company, but from, um, they're all fairly standard. And it just looks so nice. I mean, there's, Obviously, many other reasons, one of which is being ADA compliant. The other is that our bleachers are not set up on the center line or our score table is not on the center line. So sports aren't in compliance, that our current bleachers are old and clunky and difficult to open and close without someone getting hurt. And I know that for the Saturday morning basketball program, <laughs> they have these students open and close the Attempting bleachers. to. Yeah, yeah. Attempt, attempting to. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's... Um, but they, they just look so nice, too. I mean, just oh, yeah, that, that, those yeah. bleachers are old and kind of grody yeah. now. Get the short word. <laughs> yeah, and I, I will say I was able to attend that last facilities meeting where we saw that. And these are, I believe, the same bleachers that we looked at. It's okay. just we're purchased. Yeah, it's the same Hussey bleachers we're just purchasing through uh, their distributor. So they are the same ones that we looked at. And yeah, I totally agree that you know, they look real nice. They're going to operate you know, without the risk of injury, which I think is most important. Yeah. As I said at that meeting, I don't care so much about the referees and their preferences, although, you know, if it gets us another win or two, then maybe that'll, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe that'll work to their advantage. They'll have the sight line to make that that right call, I guess. But uh, the most important things I think are the safety, the ADA accessibility, and then doing it at the same time as the floor, right? I think there's, you know, some financial advantages there that we'll we'll realize by doing that at the same time. I think if they were to do the floor this summer with with the old bleachers, they wouldn't be able to refinish probably the area where the bleachers were. Then there'd be the matter of removing bleachers over the new floor, which you know, practically speaking would probably damage the some floor the floor. So I was disappointed last time that it didn't seem like we we're going to be able to do it at the same time. And I think this is. Uh, very happy to see this come across the agenda that we can do it at the same time and because that's the right way to do a project right you don't want to split it into two phases take care of it the summer and then maintain it and then you're done for you know the foreseeable future yeah. with this one investment yeah, great <clears throat> um well, if are there any other comments or questions about this uh action item and then if not, uh, would someone like to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make I'll make a motion. 
I'd like to make a motion to award the bleacher and seating accessory contract to Robert H. Lord Company, exclusive dealer for Hussey Seating Company, an amount not to exceed $100,000 to be funded from the Building Maintenance Trust Fund to further authorize the superintendent to execute the contract. Well said. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Memorize that. For you. <laughs> okay. So then thank you, Chris. And and thank you, Kim. Sure. And uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None? So great. We'll have some new bleachers coming in this summer. That'll be, that'll be a nice, nice upgrade. And then that brings us to the food service bid award. So I believe Carrie Broderick, our Chief Financial Officer is online. Yep, great. And so she'll be able to speak to the bid award as well as any other questions or topics relative to food service. This has been, um, we've had a, we had a nice committee that really met and I think was on the, we were all on the same page as to what we were really looking to accomplish and, uh, I'll speak for myself. I believe that this is uh, a good direction, um, but I think that, you know, Christine, you know, you were part of that. You could you certainly have some voice in this as well and um, what you think about it. But um, I think if we give Carrie some opportunity to discuss this and what we need to do, that would be great. Okay, great. Carrie? Hi, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay, great. <clears throat> um, so to summarize this, we had four companies that bid for our food service management um, operations for next school year. They were Chartwell's, Cafe Services, the Abbey Group, and Whitson's. They provided um, bids to, to us to take a look at that talked about their cost to run the program, what they were offering to ben as benefits to employees, what their menus would look like, what type of foods they would be offering. So when the committee sat down and looked and compared all the different categories, basically what you're looking at here is um, the criteria and what each criteria's points were worth and how each company rated when we looked at the different proposals that we received and how how they were scored. And the total um, that each were given after all scores were taken into consideration. And as you can see, the Abbey Group came in at the highest rating. Now I will, uh, I do need to mention that from the original proposals, the Abbey Group was the only one that came in with a loss to the program of $65,450. All the other ones had some type of profit. There was an issue with reimbursement rates that all of the companies used. Basically, none of them reported the revenue for the reimbursement rates that we received for, from uh, free and reduced meals correctly. So some uh, had the paid meal reimbursements wrong. Some had the paid meals and the reduced meals wrong. Another one had added extra revenue that wasn't included in the bid. And um, another one used the original reimbursement rates that we had sent out because, uh, I don't wanna make this confusing, but we had sent out revised reimbursement rates. So the Abbey Group used the original ones that were sent out. The other companies used the revised ones, but didn't really do them accurately. And when all items were taken into consideration, that weight didn't change the outcome of who was rated the highest. And that was the Abbey Group. They also came in at the lowest overall cost to the district from an expense standpoint. So we're they lacked from um, having a profit was in the revenue side. From a you, district's budget perspective, 
in next year's budget, we did include funding a loss to the program for the food service um, out of our general fund in the amount of about 182,000. So because we've already budgeted that, we have more than enough to cover the $65,450 uh, $450 loss that the Abbey Group has proposed in their budget. In addition, we budgeted expenses for the food service management company in an amount of $711,608. And their overall expenses came to Five hundred forty thousand, just over five hundred forty thousand. So we have budgeted enough to support this award should the board choose to move in this direction. I hope I made sense. Does anybody have any questions? So I think what you're saying is, you're, and I'm looking at this, is that they were the most expensive, but we have adequate budget uh, to cover them as far as Abby. The Abbey Group, is that correct? Right. So they are going to the 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 district is going to have to cover a loss to the program. That is how come they become the most expensive, even though their overall costs are the lowest. We have to support any losses to the program. The food service program is a federally funded program, so we cannot use food service. Uh, how do I explain this? The food service program cannot operate at a loss because it's federally funded. So if a food service management company proposes a loss to the program, the district has to cover it using general fund revenues. So we have to budget an expense on the general fund side to record it as a revenue on the food service side to cover any loss to the program. And um, Chris, at the, in the meeting, the Abbey Group explained the loss as um, basically these are just set up costs for their first year that yeah. they imagine that and they can predict based on how they operate in other school districts that they will that loss will not exist the second year. But um, the first year as they get established and by what's necessary and the food that's necessary to do scratch cooking, which is what they're proposing for a school district, it's gonna cost a little bit more up front. Yeah, yeah, that makes total sense to me, thank yeah. you. And I was just, just because I'm, you know, don't know much about food service in schools, I assume like the cost to students for each one of these remains the same, right? For each one of these choices, or is that the differentiator as well? Like if we were to choose like, Abbey Group or Whitson's, is there a, a difference in cost? So the, short an, the short answer is that I mean, we every year we look at whether we're going to raise or cost the same for lunch programs and so forth. Yeah. And of course, we, you know, with inflation the way it has been, I think there has been a conversation uh, regarding raising some prices, and Carrie can talk about that. But it would have been had regardless of which. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, yes. and that was my question yeah. for this. Mm -hmm. Right, so all of the proposals that were submitted were based on meal prices at our current meal prices. So all of them used the same rate when they came up with their proposals. Yep. Got it, thank you. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion that we award the operation and management of the district's food service program to the Abbey Group for one year period beginning July 1, 2023 and ending June 30, 2024 with the option for four additional one-year renewals and further to authorize a superintendent to execute the contract. Okay, yeah, thank you, Charlie. I'll second. Christine, thank you, Christine. Daisy oh. <laughs> you spoke louder than I, the words came out. Oh, okay. Well, uh, thank you both. But uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, so that carries also 7 0. And I'd like to just say a public thank you to the committee for the tremendous amount of work interviewing these committees and meeting. And that I've been hearing about the effort you guys have all been putting in this year. And this is this has been huge what you guys have done. Thank you. That massive amount of time. Thank you. I appreciate also the work that the Wellness Committee 
has done because I think that when we went through part of the lens of of going through this was looking at it from a health and wellness standpoint, but was going to be more compliant with our wellness policy, what we wanted for our kids. We do have individuals who have food insecurity within our community. Um, I think that number is larger and larger, uh, unfortunately, in, in most communities. And the quality of the food and the, um, and the quantity of people who are eating the food is really important to us. Um, it is important to their education. It's important to their well-being. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is a, I believe this is a good step. I'm excited about this group. I'm excited about the way they're going to prepare the food, the way they discuss caring for their employees, the rate that they're going to be paid, their philosophy and their approach. I think our learners are going to be see a difference and it's going to be positive. And I believe that parents will be very excited about it. Yay. I know we'll hear about it. That's the first thing I hear about when my kids come home. Did you know there's a sub bar now? I love it. <laughs> so they like talking about that food. Yep. Yep. Well, All right. Comment and question. Yes. Uh, the comment is that. Um, with our current um, provider, they were supposed to be doing surveys, student surveys, uh, and they didn't. So I have a suggestion that the school district create its own survey, and it has the uh, systems to capture all of that information, and that we do our own survey with the students and find out how happy they are with the, the food service on a regular basis and provide that feedback back to the food service. Mm, great recommendation. Uh, secondly, I wanted to ask Carrie if she wanted to address the meals pricing tonight or another night. I can talk about it if you want, you want me to address it. Yes, thank you. Sure, okay, so Ruben mentioned briefly that every year we have to take a look at our meal prices that we charge students. So um, because it's a federally funded program, we are required to meet certain minimums for the paid student lunch prices that we charge. So this does not include breakfast. It doesn't include adult meals. It only includes the paid lunch student meal prices. Um, Typically each year it's raised a certain percentage and you also has, have to look at the consumer price index. So that's all part of determining the amount that our weighted average meal prices have to meet. And currently when we look at our weighted average meal prices for our paid student lunches, we are at three, uh, $3.13 per meal. And we need to be at um, $3.56 per meal. Because our food service program had a positive fund balance as of June 30th, 2022, there is a waiver the district can apply for that will waive the requirement to increase our meal prices for next fiscal year. The recommendation is to not do that because what that creates is a further gap in trying to meet that weighted average meal price in future years. In addition, um, if the school board chose to raise the paid student meal lunch mm -hmm. prices, we're only required to do it at a minimum of 10 cents per meal. We can do it more than that, but we have to typically meet at least the 10 cents per meal if we weren't eligible for the waiver. Right now, our paid lunch student meal prices at the middle and high school are $3.25 each, and at the elementary schools, they're $3 each. So after reviewing this uh, paid lunch equity to, to try and come up with a weighted average price that will meet the $3.56 per meal weighted average 
price requirement, we can raise the paid student lunch prices for the middle and high school by 50 cents, which would bring it up to $3.75 per meal, and at the elementary schools by $3.35 per meal. And that will get us at $3.57 as a weighted average meal price. The recommendation is to not raise the breakfast prices at all because when we looked at where we stood in other areas um, near us for other school districts, we were actually higher. And that wouldn't impact this requirement anyway. In addition, um, the adult meal lunch prices, which don't impact this either, but it was discussed whether or not we should raise the adult meal lunch prices. And I'm sorry, I'm just pulling up what the re recommendation was. I think it was 50 cents for both breakfast and lunch for the adult meal prices. Charlie, do you remember what those were off the top of your head? Uh, 350 for breakfast and uh, 475 for an adult lunch. Right, which would be 50 cents each, yeah. I don't know if anybody wants to ask any questions about the requirement or has any input. Um, the board can think about it and decide at the next meeting or you can decide now whether or not you want to move forward with the recommended option that the finance committee came up with that I just mentioned. Well, I'll make a motion that we uh, increase the um, lunch price at CMHS by 50 cents and at JGS and RMS by 35 cents and that we increase the Adult meal price by 50 cents, making adult breakfast 350 and adult lunch 475. I'll second the motion. And Charlie, your recommendation for the middle and high school was just for lunch, correct? That's correct. As well as JGS and RMS. Right. Okay. Thank Carrie, you. Carrie, in that motion, do we want to say for the 2023 24 school year, or does it matter? No, I would I would say for the 23-24 school year too, please. So I'll amend my motion to include the 23-24 <laughs> school year. Thank you. Effective okay. immediately. <laughs> so we have a motion in. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. Thank you, Daisy. Charlie. Are there any questions? I, I just have one question. I, I think it was probably explained. I probably just didn't understand it. So I'm not, I trust what the finance committee has done, but I'm, in my head, I'm trying to reconcile with, with what the, the best reasoning is. Maybe Charlie, you can explain it to me. Um, so it sounds like we had a surplus in the fund, right? For this previous year. Can you explain to me why it's not advantageous? And I think Carrie did again explain it, but maybe just need to hear it again. Why wouldn't you take that and offset the cost of next year's meals or something like that? Or am I thinking about it completely wrong? It, it doesn't, well, it's not offsetting. Okay. What it's doing is it's saying that uh, there are two options there. One is a, a zero increase because yep. we have the surplus. Okay. Right? Um, and we have minimum increase of 10%. Both of those, if you plot going up 10% or you caught going up zero, we're currently at three dollars and thirteen cents. The state requirement is three fifty six. Next year, the state's requirement may be much higher than that. You know, three sixty six, three seventy. That means that if we didn't have a surplus next year, we'd have to raise the prices by seventy cents. Or if we uh, raise it up by ten percent, ten cents, we'd have to raise it another sixty cents. Got it. And what we're trying to do is keep track of the the pace of increases of the state requirement so that we really don't get behind the eight ball in any one year and have to come up with a large price increase. 
and and we think that these this price increase is reasonable considering you know the current cost of things and uh we, we also feel that it's more reasonable to uh put a higher price on a high school than in elementary schools uh, and we also believe that breakfast shouldn't be touched because we believe it's probably the most important meal of, of the day for the students so, no, I hope that answers. Yeah, that all that all makes sense. Thank you for explaining it so clearly. There's there's one more thing, Carrie. Would yeah. you be able to answer this question? My assumption is that the reason why we have the surplus is really because of um, last year's and and the prior years, really, but last year in particular, um, free meals paid for by the state. Is that correct? Is that right. still so the so thank you for asking that, Ruben, because I did want to address that. So I wanted to, to make sure it was understood that because we had a positive food service fund balance as of June 30th, 2022, that doesn't offset the meal prices. All that does is allow us a waiver. So we still have to meet that minimum at some point in time. In addition, the reason why we had the surplus, Ruben, you are correct, is that we had free meals. So we were receiving um, more in reimbursements from the federal and the state to cover the cost of the food service program. Right now, if we continue at the run rate where we're at in expenditures, we'll be running at about a loss of $85,000 in the food service program this year. So we would not be able to have any waiver if they even allowed it for next year, well, I'm sorry, for the following year. Um, um, because we would not have a positive fund balance at the end of this year, likely, is where it's looking right now. Did that help? Yeah, yeah no, I think that's I think that's important to note because we the reason why we have that is um, because of a program that no longer exists for us. Right, the and the, the reason why they have this paid lunch equity is because you're not allowed to fund the food service program with your reimbursement rates that you receive. And that's largely the reason why we had a positive fund balance last year. Okay, thank you for that question. And uh, thank you, Carrie, for explaining that. Sure. Are there uh, any other questions or comments? And then if not, we have a motion in a second, so. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? None. So that carries seven zero zero. Thank you. Okay. Before we get to board committee updates, would it be okay? This is a little bit off. I just got an email a little bit ago that I think I'd love to read in part anyway. Uh, yeah. That has to do with one of our partnerships. Okay. So we have a partnership with uh, Franklin Pierce University. Um, we're, and it's growing. We know that. So we, you know, we pour out on it every once in a while. This came in at around 4.30 today from one of the student teachers. Um, I won't say everything because there's some stuff that's specific to uh, individuals' names that are in here, but um, I thought this was really nice. This doesn't happen you know, all the time. And so now that my student teaching, this is an individual who's graduating soon, uh, maybe this week, maybe next week. Now that my student teaching placement is officially over, I wanted to reach out to both of you, myself and, and Susan uh, over at JGS. And thank you for providing me with the opportunity to enter the classroom in your school. My time at JGS was an amazing experience where I learned so much from so many hardworking professional teachers. From my very first day until my last day, I always felt welcomed and was treated like I was truly part of the staff. My experiences over the last 16 weeks will serve as a stepping stone for my future teaching career, and I cannot thank you both enough for allowing me to learn, grow, and teach within your school. JGS truly is an amazing community that I will always remember and think fondly of. Thank you both again for the incredible opportunity, and I wish you all the best for the rest of the school year. So, wow. <clears throat> Awesome. Nice for them to take the time to send a note. Mm -hmm. yes. Very cool. Very cool. And thank you for sharing that. So uh, why don't we do board committee updates? 
point, particularly any committee that uh, has met since our last meeting and uh, anything that's been scheduled since then. Finance committee met and we discussed uh, meals, prices, school meals. And you just heard most of what we discussed. <laughs> yes, great. Policy committee Thank met you. and uh, we discussed the um, school board related position stipends and we'll probably come to a decision uh, that to make some changes at the next policy meeting for interested parties who want to show up. <laughs> Education committee will meet on Thursday the 11th. Would you do? Yes, Thursday the 11th. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, did I stump you? Yeah, yeah <laughs> you did. <laughs> yeah so uh so, sorry tell me again oh the education committee is going to meet on thursday the 11th it's that's the only thursday. update that i have okay yet. very good and that's at what time 4 30 4 30 okay. right here okay great um uh, and uh i think Goals committee, do we have a date for that? We do have a date for that. Goals committee is going to be on May 20, let me get my May calendar up, May 25th at 4.30 in the superintendent's conference room. And the next policy meeting is the 18th. Okay. Okay. Thursday this month. Right after finance. Great. The wellness committee is meeting soon, John. In I'm trying to pull up the date, but struggling. May 11th to discuss the spring walk to school day. That's on the 17th, right? That's usually at 3.30, is that right? Yes. Yeah, I, I, just like a the checklist. Okay. I always want to look at it. And, uh, a bit on it. The uh, next facilities committee meeting should be on the 15th. Sure. No, wait, that's, yes, the third, the third Monday is what we've been doing. And so um, we usually meet at 10 o'clock in the morning and, and will that be your first day? The facilities director brings coffee, right? Yeah. Yeah. Coffee and donuts. And <laughs> yeah. uh, it is. It's true. Coffee, <laughs> coffee, donuts, and what are what are the other norms of this uh, committee? <laughs> Responsibility. Yeah, no, we got. Oh, we should have had a list. That would have been fun. All right, very good. And communications. Next Monday, six o'clock. This room. Okay. And I think that's all of our committee updates. Um, Dick, um, let's do our second public comment section. All right. So got the uh, policy to load up this time around. So uh, those who are not familiar, feel free to read that before making a public comment. Um, we do have a physical and a uh, remote audience. So again, physical, just raise your hand. I can bring you the microphone. If you are remote, uh, raise your hand via the hand raise feature at the bottom of your screen. That'll give me a notification to uh, let you be able to speak. In either case, first name, last name, and town of residence. While we wait, I had a very excited third grader come home and was all excited that they walked into the classroom this morning and had new Chromebooks waiting for them. <laughs> well, that seems worthy. She, she came home and she's like, Mommy, when we walked in this morning, the, the whole rack, we all had new computers. <laughs> That's great. 
well, and that's as a result of some decisions that were made earlier during the budget season. And yeah. so that's coming into play. Um, and Mike had worked with the principals over a period of time to find out the best way to do that kind of exchange and figured it was best to have them leave their computers, take them away, and then replace they, them. They were very excited when they walked in and saw new computers because they had no idea that was happening, or at least mine had no idea it was happening. And it'll be even more excited when they use them for state assessments <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the weeks to follow. <laughs> is, is, is that coming up in the next few weeks? Yeah, yeah I think even starting next week in some grade levels. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, elementary, a little bit later in the middle school. Well, uh, maybe I'll mention it as a future item. I don't know something coming. I, I showed this to Ruben today. It was obviously something he had seen, but there was a webinar done by the New Hampshire School Board Association about a month ago. And I saw it on my computer. They, you know, they always send these things out, and oftentimes you just can't find the time to attend. But I had a free hour and I was able to go on. It was uh, a new platform called iPlatform. It was through the school board association, but it was done by someone working on the contract with the State Department of Education. And it, uh, you know, it's pretty interesting. It uh, provided data, you know, statewide data, but it also provided a list of all the schools in the state. You could click on the school and you could see. Uh, proficiency ratings for each of the schools in uh, ELA and math and science. Uh, there was some other data, including average teacher salaries, class sizes, and uh, um, you know expulsion rates and uh, <clears throat> you know suspension rates, th things like that. And so. Um, just something to be aware of. It might be, it's, I guess, sort of like the state's version of a dashboard mm -hmm. for, yeah. uh, for, for data. And, uh, and it, how far back does it go? Uh, it went back several years. Uh, I'm not sure exactly, but I, I think it might lag a year. Like, I think, I think that's probably like, you know, like next last year's data will need to be soon uploaded into that. I think that's almost two years. They're almost always a couple of years behind, but, yeah. but it does archive it for many years. Right. And what I what I think I saw was back to 2018. I didn't, you know, click back to see what the data looked like from that. Because when they first brought it up, they only had it back two years. That's why I asked. Oh, I see. Yeah. And, and I'm not 100% sure, Charlie, whether that's changed, but I do recall seeing over the years there that I didn't, didn't like them. Uh, you know, one of the things that I, it's, it's always a good reminder that there are training resources out there, and the School Board Association in particular, um, you know, provides a lot of them. They do webinars and they generally do recordings of those webinars. Uh, some of them are fairly short, you know, an hour. and uh, it, it, you know, it, it's a, a worthwhile thing if you can find the time. And we're all busy, it's hard to find the time, but uh, sometimes questions do come up and they're the pros. So. And, and it's a service that we pay for as a district, so that's why we have access. Uh, yeah, um, three separate points. Um, are you referring to this site right here, John? Get it up there. The school and district report card. Is that the one you're talking about? No, it's, it's actually called iPlatform. Okay. Um, just because this is also another state thing. Um, I can't see what school's on, but if you click view report, you can go to our individual schools. This is on our website, sau47.org. Under the important links side, go to important documents. It's on the bottom. It's called New Hampshire DOE School and District Report Card. Um, that also can pull up some uh, metric data. For the different schools so another resource in that area um part two i did get um as you can see the policies up we're having what seems to be an issue internally when people are inside the building connected to our network 
viewing the policy website. Uh, it is run internally by our IT department and working with IT to see if we can get that up and running. Supposedly, there shouldn't be any issues externally. Um, the, as you can see, I have like a code up on my HTML or my URL rather. Um, that's like the internal server for it. Um, but I'll try to work on that to get that up and running. Um, and the third point, I don't remember what it is, but we don't have anybody who has a public comment. So, okay, we're very good. Round. Are there any future items? That I just have a quick question. Um, Nick, and this is a mean question after your comment about the live district calendar and people being prepared. But if you go to the calendar, I was trying to find out when the Hello Dolly musical is happening mm -hmm. and that it, I believe it's happening at the Park Theater, but I'm I'm not positive, but I think it is. Um, and it's happening like in two, less than before we come back for school board, but I couldn't open the document to see the poster or any information on it, the times and stuff. On the from the live district calendar, and there was no mention of it on the school website, but it's happening on the 11th and 12th, or 12th and 13th of May, so coming right up. So sorry, sorry to be mean about not preparing that earlier, but no, no, it's not mean at all. Yeah. Um, again, I can reach out to the person that runs that calendar. Reminder: yeah. I don't run the individual school calendars; yeah. so those are populated internally. Seems like what happened is somebody created a link that or created a um, document in Google Drive, but they didn't give the correct permission. Right. So, right. So um, that should be an easy fix. Good. Yeah, so just follow the link and it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Does anybody, I'm, I'm assuming seven o'clock, I won't worry about it. Okay. I do believe it is the bar through. That's okay. yeah, where they're at. And, and what was the date? The Conan High School and Middle School probably are doing a musical. Uh, and the musical is Hello Dolly, yay! Um, and it's happening at the Park Theater, which is very cool. And if you remember, their concert was phenomenal, su phenomenally successful. So I'm very much looking forward to it. But seating is at a premium. This is you want to get there and get your seats for this thing. It'll be standing room only. I think I have a since there's not much expert there. that could. Uh, <laughs> do you have a local expert? Please put give us a plug, local expert. It's it's me, Jen. Um, so a couple things. I think that this will be a fun one. Billy happens to be in this play, so that it's his, his play debut. But um the flyer that's on the that, that Karen Estes put out, it is May 12th at 7 p.m., May 13th at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. at the Pratt. It's the Pratt. it at the Pratt Auditorium is where it's the, the flyer says. Um right. are $13. Seniors and youth are $8. You can email for tickets. All right. Very cool. Thank you, Jen. Sure. Yeah. As a point of um the point of reference, if you go to um the middle high school website, navigate to parents and students, you go to um newsletters and then weekly, and then the correct year. Um, in the most recent um, weekly notes, there the flyer is attached in there. So there is that information. But I'll make sure that it appears appropriately on the calendar as well. Cool. Is the Pops concert also advertised? That's on the 18th? On the calendar. Yeah, I thought one of them is at the park. Maybe, maybe I'm just wrong. That's okay if it's not. I just I didn't see it. It says it's in the Pratt in the same newsletter. Okay. And the calendar only has a date and time. It doesn't say where. And doesn't have a poster link. All right. All right, very good. So um, I think we need, if there are no future, more future edits, <laughs> if we just need one more motion, that would be. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Okay, uh, thank you, Christine. Thank you, Kim. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we are adjourning. Thanks, everyone.